Hello everyone, this is a quick start guide for getting started with Metashave photogrammetry. The first step after creating a blank project is importing your photos, which you can simply drag and drop into the photo section. The next step we want to do is align our photos. So we'll click on the workflow menu and choose align photos. For the sake of speed, I'm going to leave accuracy at medium and I'm going to leave the advanced settings at their defaults. What this will do is solve the positions of our cameras and also create a really sparse point cloud so we can see what our mesh might look like. Click the camera icon at the top to visualize the camera. While this is not the best data set, it works well for the purposes of this tutorial. Next, we're going to build the point cloud. We're going to set the quality to medium, and under the advanced tab, we're going to check calculate point confidence. This is an incredibly valuable setting that will come into play later. It is something that's often missed by MetaShape users. When this completes, click on the point cloud icon and you'll see a really dense representation of your scene. To view this in color, click the drop down arrow and choose point cloud colors. It's a rough way to verify that our capture was accurate. Lastly, let's switch over to point cloud confidence. What this visualizer is showing us is how confident MetaShape is in the reconstruction of our dataset. The blue areas are high confidence and the red areas represent low confidence. What this essentially means is that the blue areas appeared in many photographs, while the red areas appeared in very few. Areas in low confidence are usually really noisy and also lack accuracy. In this case, it's not a problem because we were not focusing on those areas. After we generate the model, we can use these colors as a guide for removing unwanted geometry. As you can see, the point confidence directly correlates to our camera path. The next step is building the mesh. Make sure to set the source data to depth maps and we're going to leave the quality on medium. To view the mesh, click the model icon. We're going to switch this back to solid. We can see that Metashape has created some nice clean geometry from our depth maps. If we switch to model confidence, we can see very clearly where we have high detail geometry and where we have very low detail geometry. We will use this information to quickly crop out what is unnecessary. To crop the mesh, we will choose the selection icon and choose freeform selection. Using the confidence as a guide, we will quickly select the polygons that we don't want and delete them. This is something you can refine in your 3D software of choice. Often, you'll end up with some floating geometry around your model. 
This is really easy to clean up. Navigate to the model menu and choose gradual selection. Then select connected component size and set the level to 99. This will highlight those objects in red and then you can easily delete them. Okay, let's build the texture. To do this, navigate to Workflow and choose Build Texture. I'm going to stick with the defaults here and set my texture size to 4K, but that size is entirely up to you. Under the Advanced section, make sure to enable Hole Filling and the Ghosting filter. This will ensure that areas where our camera couldn't see will still have a texture generated. Select the Model Icon drop-down arrow and choose Model Texture to see the texture we just generated. I happened to shoot this on a really overcast day and also did some pre-processing to the images to make this really flat. But there are ways around this if you happen to shoot on a sunny day and captured shadows in your photos. I'm going to cover more advanced techniques in the next video. To export the model, go to File, Export, Export Model. After you create a name, you have options for the texture format as well as attributes for the model. I forgot to mention, all of the data created in each step is contained within the chunk in the workspace. If you use the drop down arrow, you can see tie points, depth maps, point cloud, and 3D model we've created, and you can swap between them on the fly. Hopefully, this helps you understand the basic workflow of using Metashape. In a future video, I'm going to cover more advanced techniques like image pre-processing and quality estimation. If you found this video helpful, consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you.